now, in Nairobi, paying with your bill, with bills on your mobile, it's easier than, frankly, anywhere else. Now, I'm not talking about contactless or any nonsense where you're Venmoing or PayPaling. I'm talking about where you literally walk into a shop or speak to somebody, they give you their number, you give them yours, beep, 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 bish, bosh, bosh, and it's all done, money transferred. Kenya has become a world leader in the mobile banking revelation, and it's all thanks to the system M-Pesa. It was launched by Vodafone's Safaricom, and in only a decade, M-Pesa has expanded its money transfer service to almost 30 million customers across 10 countries. Now, with M-Pesa, and with all of that going on, we want to know if you think Kenya has the economic edge over its African rivals. Oh, boy. Taking our trust and hope and wind in one hand. Go to cnn.com slash join cnn.com slash join and you vote for which country you think will be the leading performer in the future in Africa. You'll see the choices that you have on when you go there. It is uh, Nigeria, South Africa, Kenya and Ethiopia. Which, there you go. Which of these countries will lead Africa in the next 20 years? The chance to vote and have your say. In the past few years, M-Pesa has become so big that investors now use it to buy Kenyan government bonds. I went to the streets of Nairobi to see M-Pesa's impact for myself. Long before Apple Pay or Venmo launched in the US, years before WeChat and Alipay took over China, <laughs> mobile banking got started right here in Nairobi. M-Pesa! Peso was created in 2007. Its service is simple. Money is sent back and forth like a text message. Transfers can be made and received on even the most basic phones. And you don't need a bank account. Do you use it every day? Of yeah. course, every day. It's easy. In 10 years, it's evolved from a simple money transfer service to a fully-fledged financial platform. It offers savings and loans. It even sells insurance. Do you take M-Pesa? Yeah, we take M-Pesa. Oh. Yeah, of course they do. M-Pesa. M-Pesa, we can accept. Ah, now this is the real test. Can I buy newspapers using M-Pesa? Yeah. Never mind American Express, Visa or MasterCard. It's M-Pesa. There are only 2,000 ATMs in Kenya. Compare that with 120,000 M-Pesa agents. Places where Kenyans can withdraw or deposit cash in exchange for virtual M-Pesa currency. Is this the sort of place that I can give money to charge my M-Pesa? Yes. And I do that with you? Yes. And is this the sort of place where I can then come to and get money from M-Pesa? Yes. Believe it or not, I can do more mobile banking here in Kenya can in New York City or London. You're getting the idea. It doesn't matter what you're buying. Mobile banking now is the heart of the payment system in East Africa. You get the idea. 93% of the population has access to mobile payments. In fact, transactions processed by platforms like M-Pesa account for nearly half of Kenya's entire GDP. I've never quite seen a revolution in payment systems like it. Forget PayPal or Venmo. This is going right to the grassroots here. Everybody takes Mpesa. That's what you call marketing and mobile banking. Extraordinary. Um, you can still see the question, by the way, uh, and maybe that affects how you're going to vote on which economy will lead Africa in the next 20 years. Now, Michael Joseph was the chief executive of, of Safaricom when he helped found M-Pesa. He told his employees he wanted a million users in the first year or they'd be fired. The rest is history. The reason for the success in Kenya, and particularly in Kenya, is because when we started out, we, people forget we spent $10 million in our first year. Of, of investing in Pesa. What we spend the money on is the distribution network. You can go anywhere in Kenya. Within 200 meters, you will find an Pesa agent. That is the secret of success. So when, you, when I send you money, or if I don't even send you money, you, if you sign up to Pesa, you want to know that if I, you get money, you can take it out anywhere at any time. 
and that's why we built a huge distribution network. So it was very, it, they're very confident that people would take their money out. So what's the incidence of people just leaving the money in M-Pesa, unless they need a bit of short cash, but they just leave it in there and use it as a, because they, it's so widely accepted when even the newspaper vendor accepts it, you just, if you receive money from them, you just leave it there and spend it through it. No, yeah, no, that's what the people do. In the beginning, in the early days, you sent money in, you sent someone money, and immediately they went and took it out. Now, now the next to your, your previous question, when they start to leave the money in for two or three days, that money sits in a current account, a trust account, which is not owned by Safaricom, it's owned by external trustees, and that money generates interest, overnight interest. In fact, we are the biggest buyer of government bonds at the moment. 70% of the government bonds in Kenya are on PESA trust account funds. That money earns interest. When we started out, we didn't know it would be so successful. We had no clue. So we just thought the interest would be just enough to pay the bank fees and, and the audit fees and things like that. But it's got so big now that we started an Impesa Foundation to spend this money. So we spend it on big charitable projects. And so yesterday, besides the mm, fee yeah. for the transaction, Impesa yeah. doesn't make money off the float. No, no, it doesn't make the float belongs to the Impesa, to the trust <coughs> company. And that, me. that's the money that we, <coughs> we use to fund charitable projects. We just built an enormous school uh, north of, of Nairobi. To, to, to produce the future leaders of Kenya. We talked about corruption. There's only one way you can solve for corruption, that's to start from the bottom. And now we have started the school. It's an academy. When you're taking young people, we're taking four kids from every, uh, from every county every year, and they are come from very poor backgrounds, but they have some spark of leadership. And these are the future leaders of Kenya. Is it your ambition to expand uh, Mpesa elsewhere out of africa well it's my ambition it's whether you can be successful or not now we have taken impesa i've taken impesa to mozambique to tanzania to lesotho to egypt to ghana into india we tried to take it into europe into albania and romania we tried very hard very difficult to be successful it's you need to have critical mass for it to be successful because the transaction fees are so low that you need many, many millions of transactions. We were not successful. To my sadness, we were not successful. India, we tried very, very hard. And India is a very strange country. So, uh, but, but if you look at this country, the, there was a learning curve or there was a, a developmental curve that got more and more people involved. Uh, when it started, it was just between friends or it was just between, just between, between families. Mm -hmm. Getting merchants to sign on was the difficult. Yeah. Was more difficult. Yeah, but one thing you have in Kenya is you have a fantastic uh, population that takes to technology so quickly, and the, when the kids started to use it, it just began to grow. What did you feel like when you saw it grow? Because you put your, na your, your, your neck on the line, you had a hunch, and all, there must have been a moment. There must have been a moment where you saw, oh gosh, this is really taking off. Okay, so what happened was when we launched it, the, the business plan said we would have 350,000 customers in our first year. I said to the team, you have to have a million. I just dragged the figure out of the air to a million. They said, it's impossible, too difficult. You have to sign up everybody. You have to change the SIM card. You have to do a KYC. Everybody just takes so much effort. I said, I don't care. You get a million or I fire you. And my style of management was that kind of style of management. I'm not a Democrat, okay, I'm a dictator. Anyway, that's what I said. And we got one million customers in our first year. And that was the critical mass. You never had to advertise again. Because once you got a million, it became viral.